So how I might navigate this is let's, let's look at a, an example of a problem. So here's a problem. Find an equation for uh, the line that joins the following two points. Negative 2, 6 and 3, 11. Uh, no, I don't like 11. Um, let's say uh, negative 4. So this might be a typical kind of question you would get in this section. You're given two points, and the question is, find an equation for the line that connects those two points. So the information that we're given is we're given these two points, negative 2, 6, and 3, negative 4. So we're starting up here, and where we're trying to get to is down here. Right? We want the slope-intercept equation for this line. So our goal is to get to this box. So according to this little diagram, what's the first thing that I should do? In order to get closer to my goal of finding a slope-intercept equation for the line that connects these two points, what should I find first? First thing I should do is find the slope. Um, Everything else that we do in this problem is going to hinge upon our success at first finding the slope of the line that joins these two points. If we can do that, then we're actually most of the way there. So let me make a little more space. So the first thing I should do is find the slope. So how do we find the slope of a line that connects two points? So our first task is to, given two points, determine the slope of the line that joins these two points. And Laura tells us there's an equation. So what I want to do is talk through where the equation comes from, because it helps to illuminate, first of all, how to remember it, um, and secondly, what the slope actually means in the first place. What's the slope that joins these two points? So what we do in order to measure a slope, a slope is a single number. But it's a single number that represents a relationship, a comparison. And what that number compares is it compares how quickly the x values along this line vary versus how quickly the y values along this line vary. Um, and what I mean by that is it takes the x values of these two points, which are negative 2 and 3, and it measures the difference between those x values. So if I want, I could draw that along the x-axis here. x equals 3 to x equals negative 2. Those are the x values that make up this pair of points. And I could, if I wanted to, move this into context. Maybe I'll move it down here. Right. That's the horizontal difference, if you like, between these two points, is between negative 2 and 3. Well, how much difference, how much distance is there, actually, between negative 2 and 3? How many grid lines am I crossing here? Five. Yeah, I'm crossing five. So one way to say that is what I'm doing, really, is I'm going five spots to the right. To go from the first x value to the second x value, I'm moving five spots to the right. Now, where did that five come from? It came from three minus negative two. It's the difference. We get that by subtracting the x values. So in order to go from the first point here to the second point, what I'm really doing is moving five steps to the right. My x value is changing by five. So that's how the horizontal values are changing. Let's look at the vertical values. The vertical coordinates of these points are 6 and negative 4, respectively. So if I connect those two values on the y-axis, that gives me some point of comparison between these two y values. So y equals 6 up here on the top, and y equals negative 4 down here on the bottom. And I'm going to move that line segment also kind of into context. I'm just going to slide it over to here. Now, how many spaces of vertical distance are there in between 6 and negative 4? How many grid lines have I crossed there? 10 grid lines separate me from the first point and the second point if I'm counting the, the vertical streets, if you like. So this is 10. But in moving from the first point to the second point, I haven't increased by 10. I've really gone 10 down. So I'm going to think of that as being negative. 
moving from the first point to the second point. Where does that negative 10 come from? It's, again, the result of a subtraction problem. Negative 4 minus 6. The second y value minus the first y value. Right? The negative 4 from this point minus the 6 from that point. So we get these two different values. We have the negative 10, which is the vertical separation between my two points. It tells me how far down I went. And then I also have the positive 5 that tells me how far left versus right that I went. In this example, I went to the right, so it's a positive. And I want to get one number out of this comparison of two. How do I do it? Yeah, I'm going to do it by dividing. The vertical difference divided by the horizontal difference. And to get that number, I'm just going to divide negative 10 divided by 5. It's going to give me negative 2. And that right there is the number that we call the slope of this line. Which means that back on our original slide, it's what we called m. Negative 2. This is the slope. It tells us, another way to say this, is that however much x changes, however much we change uh, horizontally, if you like, along this graph, the value of y is going to change by negative twice as much. Negative 2 times as much. So if x goes up by 5, as it did here, y is going to go down by 5 times 2. It's going to go down by 10, and so forth. Um, and if you like formulas, if you like a formula to take away from this to remember what it is that we just did, we can make a formula out of it. And this is typically what people will endeavor to remember. If you prefer to remember a formula for this, let's again take a look at what we did to get the answer that we got. The last thing we did is we did a division problem to take the vertical difference divided by the horizontal difference to compare one of them to the other. On the top of our fraction, what we divided was the difference in vertical coordinates between our two points. So I took the y-coordinate of the second point, and I subtracted the y-coordinate of the first point. So how that usually shows up in the formula is we're going to subtract two values of y, one from another. But we need to specify that these are the values from two different points. So we're going to call one of them y sub 1 and the other one y sub 2. So it's the second y coordinate minus the first y coordinate, negative 4 minus 6. And then the same thing happens in the denominator, except instead of thinking about vertical values, we're thinking about horizontal values, which means instead of thinking about y's, that positive 5 downstairs came from a difference of x's. So we're going to subtract the x values, one from another. And the important part is not which one of these points are the x1, y1, and which one is the x2, y2. The important thing is that we're consistent. That if I decide that this point on the lower right is my x2, y2, for example, then that means that my other point is x1, y1. And if you and I make different choices about that, if, I decide, if you decide that the one on the lower right is x1, y1, and the, the upper left is x2, y2, you're going to get some different numbers along the way, but you're going to come out with the same answer at the end as I do. So don't sweat that choice. Just make sure that the y value that you chose goes up alongside, upside down, uh, uh, above or below, the x value that you chose. So the things that people screw up on this is they'll accidentally get one of these out of order. They'll, they'll get the y value from one point matched up with the x value from the other point. So make sure you're consistent. The other thing, which is probably the most common thing for people to screw up in computing a slope, is that they'll get the y values and the x values mismatched. So most important point to remember what not to do, y's are always on top. And the x is on bottom. So this formula gives us a roadmap for how, given two points, to determine the slope of the line that joins those two points. We know now that to take this first step, we have this popular formula. m equals the difference in y's divided by the difference in x's. y2 minus y1 
over x2 minus x1. That's how we can determine a slope given two points. And using that formula, or using the, the reasoning that we just used in this example, we found that the slope of the line that joins the two points that we were given here is negative 2. So that means that right away, in our slope-intercept equation, we can substitute 2 in where we have the m, the slope. That's oh, I'm sorry. You're right. It's negative 2. Yeah. Thank you. Good catch. Yep. Don't let me lose a sign. I, I take off points when you do it, so take off points when I do it. Um, negative 2. Thank you. So now we've put the slope into its spot, but we're not done. Right? We don't have the equation for this line completed yet because we still haven't figured out the y-intercept. So now the question is, how do we fill in that last missing piece? How do we figure out what the y-intercept of this line is now that we know slope? What do we know is we know the coordinates of two points, which means we know a relationship between x value and y value, actually two different relationships between x value and y value. We also know that our equation now has the form y equals negative 2x plus b. So to find that y-intercept, what we're going to do is leverage what we know. We're going to use a point. Actually, I'm going to replace this with even more flowery language. Plug in. Plug in a point that you know into the equation that we're building down here, y equals negative 2x plus b. What we're trying to figure out is b now, the y-intercept. Which means if I know x and I know y and I plug them into this equation, the only thing I don't know is b, and therefore I can solve to find the value of b, once b is the only thing I don't know. So let's suppose, again, taking our equation template, y equals mx plus b, but we know now that m is negative 2, y equals negative 2x plus b. Which of these two points would you like to pick? Here's another hint, don't sweat the choice, because you and I will come up with the same value of b at the end of the problem, regardless of which point we choose. So let's say we choose 3, negative 4. What am I going to plug in where if I make that choice? Where's the 3 going to go? Where's the negative 4 going to go? Sarah? There we go. After all, that's how ordered pairs work, right? In an ordered pair, the first number in the pair is the x, the second number in the pair is the y. So the point 3, negative 4, I will substitute in this equation by adding, not adding, but replacing x with 3 and y with negative 4. And now you can see what the task ahead of us is. We just have an equation that we can solve for b. Negative 2 times 3 is negative 6. So negative 6 plus b is equal to negative 4. How do I solve this equation for b? What step do I need to do to get the b by itself? Add 6. Add 6. Yeah. And when I add 6 to both sides, I'm going to find out that b is negative 4 plus 6. Two. So according to the work that we just did, the y-intercept of this line is 2. Let's look back at the graph that we were drawing a moment ago. On this graph, we plotted the two points that we were given, but we didn't actually connect the dots. Let's connect the dots to get a reality check on our situation. If I connect those two points that we drew, negative 2, 6, and 3, comma, negative 4, I get something that looks like a straight line because you're kind of taking my word for that at this point, uh, that this equation will be a straight line. Um, but how can we find from this picture what is the y-intercept of this line? Where am I going to find the y-intercept on this graph? What does y-intercept mean? What makes the y-intercept the y-intercept is that that's the point where this graph crosses the y-axis. So the y-coordinate of that point is 2. What's the x-coordinate? Yeah. Yeah. The 
y, the x coordinate at that point is 0. Because that point lies on the y axis. And because the point lies on the y axis, that means the value of x is equal to 0. So if you believe me that the algebra tells us from the previous slide that the value of b, the y-intercept, should be 2, that's verified in our picture because y equals 2 is the y-coordinate of the point at which this line crosses the y-axis. Namely, that's what we call the y-intercept, the point 0, 2. So all told, what do we have? We started with two given points. Negative 2, 6, and 3, negative 4. We use those points to find a slope using this formula. Difference in y's divided by difference in x's. Then we use that slope, and one of our points, we happen to choose 3, negative 4. We would get the same answer if we chose the other one. Using this template equation to find, then, the value for b. And now that I know the value for b, the last thing I need to do is just to plug that value for b into our equation to complete the picture. This is a step that a lot of people forget when they're solving one of these problems, is that they forget to actually come up with their final answer, the equation of this line. But there it is. So we start with two points. We use them to find a slope. We use the slope to find the y-intercept. And then we took all that information, we bundled it together into the slope-intercept equation for this line. 